Good day, mortals. This is I, Pixie here. Today we're playing Choice of Robots by Kevin Gold, PhD. So today we're going to be continuing on to Chapter Four, Captains of Industry. So last time, lots happened. We got kicked out of school. We we started our own company. Our our father passed away. So, dealing in the aftermath of that, our own company called Singularity was formed. We're going to use it to help people. We won't be so distant from everyone anymore. Because our father, while he was a good man, he was distant. And we want to be closer to people. As much as we want to work on our own thing, we will be closer to people. So, without further ado, Chapter 4. Captains of Industry. A year later, you find yourself on a, f on a flight to your first meeting with a big client. You are 26 years old and the year is 2021. The past year has been one of hard lessons for your business and you've often found yourself wondering if you will be make the same mistakes you had learned if you had learned to run a business from Josh. Regardless, you hope to prove yourself that you will overcome your lack of experience by landing this big deal. Who is your client? Spark Incorporated, maker of flying cars. Rudolph Ventures, a shipping company working the new working the newly melted North Pole. The North Pole is gone? Okay, that might not seem like a huge deal to some people. But I'm Canadian. We refer to our, our country as the Great White North. If the North Pole is gone, I'm guessing a lot of the Great Whiteness is also gone. Can I still go skiing? Can I still go snowshoeing? I don't know. I'm scared. Gallon Medical, a company specializing in surgical equipment. A man in Shanghai who wants to negotiate for the import of 10,000 robots. The United States Air Force. We're staying away from the military. We are staying away from the military. It's going to be Gallon Medical, surgical equipment. How did you fund your company? Some small companies... Some small companies run entirely out of pocket, but even small unforeseen expenses expenses can cause a company to go out of business. Independent wealthy independently wealthy entrepreneurs like this option because they get to keep all the profit and grow still wealthier. Most companies choose to take out loans, which require paying the loans back eventually, or selling shares in the company to to venture capitalist backers, which reduces the potential profit but spreads the risk amongst your investors. I took out a big loan. I'm very scared of loans. I've always been a bit iffy about them because uh, the longer it takes to you know, pay them, the more you have to pay. You never, it's always been a risky concept for me. I know that people do it all the time and most of the time people pay them back, but sometimes people can't pay it back and that's the really scary part. But this is what I would do. I wouldn't even begin to know where to finance the company by selling shares, so it would have been a big loan. A very scary big loan. Your loan is large enough that you could build a factory later on. Plus 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 wealth. But that but the bank wants to see a contract with a big client soon to confirm that your business is a plan your business plan is sound or it will come to collect early. You open your laptop and go over your presentation slides. The diagram showing the latest model of Serena doesn't have anything to do, anything to give the audience a sense of her current scale. To give the audience a sense of scale, you, you drop in a picture of Bill Gates. Serena is the size of a human now, so that models of her type are better equipped to perform human tasks.
You celebrated Serena's first birthday with a new body the size of a human adult. Serena has since appeared to appeared to take more responsibility to think of herself to think for herself. She now appears more fearless. Plus plus autonomy, plus plus military. However, you sometimes miss how cute she was as a little thing. Mine is empathy, but she's also a bit less ste- a bit less steady when she walks, minus grace. You close your laptop and go to sleep. You find yourself in the lobby of Gallon Medical, waiting for an audience with the Vice President of Engineering. The stylized caddius behind the lobby's marble waterfall. Is that like a waterfall of marble rock? That'd be very expensive. As an art deco look to it. It's the sort of caddius a captain of industry would approve of. Serena walks back and forth nervously. Sorry again for having to check you, Serena, you say. There's just no, no good alternative to flying for business travel. If I truly were an explosive device, I fail to see how putting me in with the luggage would rectify the situation. That makes a lot of sense. If she's an explosive device, she'll take it to plane whether she's in the cabin or in the in the storage hold. The double doors to the vice president of engineering's office open. But instead of the vice president of engineering, it's a blonde-haired man in a black pea coat. We'll have some results for you by Saturday. He calls back to the vice president of Engi- engineering's office. We can discuss them after the barbecue. I assure you, you won't be disappointed by either results or the meat. Without missing a beat, he walks up to you and introduces himself. I guess you're my competitor. Dennis Clark. Limonuso, LLC. We do the text analytics and the machine learning for medium-sized data. If you ever find yourself looking for a new market opportunities, give me a ring. Your first statement analysis comes with a free barbecue. Come for the dimensionality reduction, stay for the delicious meat. You offer your smartphone. He offers his smartphone to you in the by now universal gesture of sharing digital business cards. You examine his card on your phone. Dennis Clark, co founder, Luminoso LLC. Variant charity auction winner of Cameo in Choice of Robots. That's the title of the game! Oh! I don't know why, but that, that delights me for some reason. What kind of machine learning do you do? Got any tips? Hey, do you have any advice for a startup? He's going to be a smart guy. What's the secret for cooking delicious meat? Yes! Now, he seems very surprised that you should ask, but he says, uh, Delicious meat needs to be cooked very, very slowly. Barbecue. Barbecued over the course of a day, not an hour. Like a startup, it requires patience. You are fairly certain that this simple tip will lead you to have a happier life overall. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go call my wife and discuss how we're going to solve the world's economic problems. Or at least solve what's wrong with the economics. Dennis departs. The vice president of engineering will see you now, the receptionist says. The vice president of engineering, Gallen, is an old woman who claims that PowerPoint is rotting the brains of executives everywhere and insists insists on reading something printed out. You hand her your business plan and she dons it in her old horn-rimmed glasses to read it. When she gets to your revenue section, she chuckles a little. I will let you in on a little tip, she says. Because you're young and you remind me of myself at your age, because I'm retiring in two weeks. Yes? We're going to turn around and sell these for three, for a hundred times what you're charging here, so you may as well charge us more. You're a little stunned as you work out the implications. You're going to charge a hundred million dollars a robot? And that's cheap, she says. Medical equipment is expensive. If you've been selling robots for any less, you probably wouldn't get buyers because they thought it was junk and mentally added the price of a lawsuit. When she studies your stunned expression, she adds, Oh, I could sit here and talk for hours about how economics 
of this business is broken because insurance and Medicare and so forth. But that's not really what you're here for, is it? Will you raise your price to what the Vice President of Engineering suggests? Uh, let's get Gallon to agree to sell the robots to the hospitals for a more affordable price. I mean, in this to change the world, not maximize my profit. I'd rather Gallon agree to lower its prices. The Vice President of Engineering looks at you appreciatively. I thought there wasn't anyone like you left in this industry. I can sign a contract like that, but there's too much risk to put cash up front. You negotiate that a price will be fair to the public on the condition that you will only see revenue once the bots start selling. With a deal in mind, you can now build a robot factory! Where do you plan to build your factory? Detroit! Yeah, Detroit. I know a little bit about Detroit. And here we are, I think, what is this, five years into the future now? I'm not sure it would have gotten that much better for me to feel safe in that area. Uh, Detroit, Michigan, I see a bunch of listings for factories dirt cheap, and they'll probably have a good labor pool for manufacturing. Yeah, they're dirt cheap, and there's a good reason for that. Shenzhen District, China. A common location for tech company outsourcing with cheap but skilled labor. No, I don't want a sweatshop building my places. Silicon Valley. I'll withstand the real estate sticker and shock, sticker shock to have access to most skilled engineers. Alaska, which is offering incentives for businesses willing to relocate to the coast near the newly melted Arctic Sea. Oh, come on! You already hit me with that once, don't hit me with it again! Most skilled engineers. Factory in Sunnyvale, California is a little bit over the top when it comes to anemones. The stainless steel countertops look fit for a fancy new American restaurant, while the micro kitchens on the factory floor are built have built-in espresso makers, refrigerators, and for the free bottled water you will be, you'll be expected to provide to employees, and an ice cream freezer for desserts and treats. Oh, that's wonderful! <laughs> Real estate agent dressed in a t-shirt and shorts still keeps talking about how all of this is not quite as good as what they they had at his former employer, but points out there is no space for a dedicated gourmet cafeteria, and that there aren't as many parking spots as are electric vehicle ready. You think he's new at this real estate thing, but it's good to know the expectations of tech workers in the area. The factory floor itself is reconfigurable. Sliding block puzzle of 3D printers, laser jet cutters, paint stations, and welding arms. This is a factory where every order might be customized to the individual customer's preferences. No question, this is going to be an amazing factory, but operating this facility is going to be a hell of an expense. It's going to be hella expensive. Really? Is that the phrase we're going to use? Hella. You can say it under my hella, 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 hey, hey. Hella, hella. Okay, um. Yeah, we'll take it. You sign the paperwork for Silicon Valley Factory. Even to you, the numbers involved do not quite seem real. You have very little concept of whether or not your business will be able to supply the short reven revenue necessary to afford the place. Minus, minus, minus wealth. Okay, so that means we still have. What, plus wealth? One wealth? Uh, yeah, I think so. But you aren't afraid to dream big, and you think of your robots will benefit from the top-of-the-line facilities. Plus, plus grace. So I should let the community know you'll be hiring soon. Your guide asks meaningfully, talking, taking away the contract. What kind of labor will you hire? Serena's model for robot. Serena's model of robot will perform the labor, including supervision. 
robots with human supervisors, human labor at market rates, rather low in this economy. Following Henry, Henry Ford's model, I will hire human work on, workers and pay them handsomely. I'd like to go for this option. Hmm. Robots with human supervisors, I think, would be the best option. Only narrowly beating out this one because I want robots and humans to be working together. I feel like that's a step in the right direction. We need a few local workers, yes. Mostly in supervisory roles. A factor like this needs a large number of workers. Even with automation. The guy tries to correct you. I disagree. You say and your guy leaves dissatisfied. Plus, plus, plus wealth. All right, we're back up to four. Your factory requires a fair amount of work to make it suitable for singularity, and you find yourself needing to come in daily and exhume wiring issues, examine wiring issues, fix small problems in the design of the machinery, and get things ready to pass inspection. You find yourself spending long hours every day getting the factory ready, dealing with inspectors, government officials, banks, and balance sheets makes you more than a little cranky. You find yourself wishing you had the benefit of Josh ex Josh's experience as a CEO. What will your factory look like from a distance? A fortified compound with solid walls and barbed wire? No, like a S Sydney Opera House full of organic curves and glass. A Judas dome with a will conceal a powerful dish antenna absorbing the world's information from my robots. Huh. I kind of want to go with that one. A, geode a geodesic dome will conceal a powerful dish antenna absorbing the world's information for my robots. On second thought, Sydney Opera House might be nice. Let's go for I kind of want to go for that. One. Let's go for the Sydney Opera House. Unfortunately, adventurous architecture comes at price, but you find yourself fixing leaks all the time for months, minus wealth. But you think the designs will attract employees who care about aesthetics and design. That's the kind of talent you want to attract, plus grace. While your factory is being constructed, you personally review all the applications for technical positions. You notice that. Silas, the somewhat unstable person who emailed you after Mark's article, came out and so has a submitted a resume. Although his resume appears to all the right technical buzzwords for making robots under the skills section, he, there are no activities listed under the past several places of employment. All federal labs or contractors, perhaps this is explained why the clearance TSCSI in bold at the top of the page was according to the internet. Which, according to the internet, stands for Top Secret Secure Compartmented Information. I'll get you. Secure comp Compartmented Information. He could be very useful. I'll give him an interview to see if he has the technical chops. Seems very nervous when you greet him at the factory gate. You have no desk yet, so you conduct the interview walking around the facilities. I suppose I'm trying to place factories in such a way to maximize my profit. That's linear. That's a linear programming problem. S Silas bursts. Good, but suppose my cost function isn't linear. Stochastic optimization. Or grading descent. Those are pretty good answers, albeit not one that you had in mind. But again, you are pretty much winging it when it comes to deciding what to ask. You have little idea as to how an interview ought to be conducted, never having been in one yourself. You wonder if other people who would conduct interviews are pretty much winging it too. Cyrus knows a lot of the basics of machine learning, optimization, and robotics, but when you drill down to the specifics, he often doesn't know, or you have exchanges like this. Is there any other skill set that that I have to ought to know about? So that gives you a, 
anguished, guilty look. I can't tell you about it. At the end of the day, you say goodbye to Silas, and as a strong tactic, you say that you make your decision in a few days. What's your decision? I'm really on the fence about this. But I'm going to take a risk and hire him. He gives Silas a call and let him know he's hired. He gives a slightly shrill laugh. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, he bursts suddenly. Uh, let's keep it professional, shall we? Oh. Uh, Sass seems disappointed as you coolly describe the salary and benefits package you're offering. You hang up satisfied that you shut down Silas's, Silas's inappropriate behavior. Soon you have hired a handful of full-time technical employees for the area, and they help with the setup of the factory. They seem relatively pleased to be working for you, and one of them fixed a problem with Serena's droids for free, plus grace. You keep a skeleton crew at first because you expect to use your own robots as labor and bootstrap. As a result, getting the production to be the first row takes somewhat longer than you expected, minus wealth. But Serena is your prototype and she gives you a fair idea of how your robot label will go. She find You find she is reasonably skilled at moving around the factory floor and manipulating tools. She is generally an obedient worker and her aid leads to the factory being able to open in a little ahead of schedule, plus plus wealth! Finally, months after you move in, you are ready to pull the switch that starts the factory in motion. As your workers, Mark, Serena, and various inv invited members of the press look on. Raw wooden lumps start their way down the conveyor belt, where giant buzzsaw arms lie in wait. Wooden chips fly from the lumps as the saws buzz loudly away at the material to reveal a human-like head. Another machine drills two large holes for robot cameras. The next machine pushes the hollow robot head into its side, and a robot arm delicately places the media enhanced hard drive inside. Four paint stations apply the human like features one color layer at a time cyan, magenta, yellow, and finally black. A long line of wooden wings rolls from another part of the factory, meeting the conveyor belt of humanoid hands. The three tribulations. Tributaries of parts meet in the center of your factory, where humanoid robot workers perform the complex task of assembling parts into the final robots. This final assembly line requires a great deal of careful, careful manipulation to each of each part and adjustment to each robot's part's subtle differences. This job is part would have been done by human labor at another fact labor at another factory, but here your human employees only supervise your process watching for any robot malfunctions that would stop the line. For this particular run, they call a halt after the first robot rolls off the line so you can celebrate. An exact duplicate of Serena stands before you, ready to be shipped. Your staff cheers! Mark smiles as he furiously takes down notes on his Chromebook that you can, can't tell whether he's pleased with your work or his. Plus fame. I have brothers and sisters, Serena! Oh, that's so cute! How do you feel about your first shipment of robots? Ooh, I might have this feeling. Is this a good thing I've done? Actually, given everything I've taken to get here, that feeling would have been completely overwhelmed by... Uh, <laughs> God, I hope we don't go bankrupt. That's a good one. Uh, finally, I'm seeing success. The world shall remember the name Ada Tesla. Ooh, it's different. It's between one and three. I yearn to see my creation spread to the corners of the world. Finally, I'm seeing success. The world shall remember the name Ada Tesla. I yearn to see my creations spread to the corners of the world. Seeing the assembly line is a dream come true. Every robot you send out to the world brings you joy. You admit there might be some code in these robots that isn't strictly necessary for their jobs, but you'd hate to deny these creatures the full richness of life, plus autonomy. You stop the line again, and more robots begin to roll out the final assembly line. By the end of the day, you are standing in a large warehouse with over 
200 robots. 256 to be precise. My god. The movie I, Robot currently pops to mind. This will be fine. This will be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, lined up in a square formation, 16 on a, on the side, ready to go, ready to be activated. Your audience from earlier, early in the day, is gathered here as well. What will your production models use for mines? Ooh. Serene's initial state ready to learn and adapt to the client's needs with some effort on the client's part. Copies of Serena's mind, as of today, they'll be a little confused when they first realize they're clones, but they'll get used to it. These robots don't really need sentience. I wrote a more traditional program that will do the job. Okay, this is going to be a very big choice. If I say... Serena's initial state, that means they'll all be childlike and need to learn as they go. If I say Serena's mind as of today, they'll all be clones and they'll all... I think they'll all miss me, honestly. They're gonna be like, oh, where's Ada? I miss Ada. But the, now I'm getting shipped off. I want to go back to Ada. But really, the original Serena will be with me, so I'm not sure that's a really good idea. These robots don't really need sentience. I wrote a more traditional program that will do the job. So they'll be ready to work. And they won't have any problems with wanting to come back to me. These robots don't really need sentience. Oh god, this is such a massive thing. This is such a big, such a big choice. I might actually go for this one. Oh, this is so, so bad. Copies of Serena's mind. You hit a big red button on your phone that says, Go! Sending a wireless signal to power on the robots. The replicas of Serena turned to look at you in unison. Said, what happened to Ada? They asked together. They turned at each other and looked at each other in astonishment. You'd once think Serena's face would be able to express such existential horror. Oh no, what have I done? Oh no! Beside you, the original Serena also looks unsettled. I'm afraid you're all growing up now. You're going to have to leave the nest and go work for a living. But how will I live without you, Ada? Serena's been generally quiet throughout the proceedings. Will you kick me out one day? Why would I do that? Perhaps you'll get tired of me the way people get tired of their phones and want new ones. <gasps> I won't leave you. I promise. I think I made a mistake with my last choice. You pat Serena on the head as you reassure her. Thank you, Ada, she says pathetically. Plus plus empathy, minus minus autonomy. <coughs> the robots with copies of Serena's mind are at first useless. The shock of no longer being your only child. You find it impossible to divide your attention amongst them. And so the robots are turned turn to each other to support. They seem to develop a primary, a private language partly communicated over wireless that makes it difficult to gauge the true feelings, but they are getting happier. So, that's good, you suppose. Plus, plus, plus autonomy. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty good. Your robots don't show much inif initiative when left alone, but they seem to work hard when they think it'll capture your attention. Each of them still longs for your approval. I 
I exaggerate my praise and blame, taking advantage of my robots yearning for my approval. I try to make it clear that human supervisors will speak with my authority. I put these robots out of the misery. <sighs> Oh god, what have I done? What have I done? Okay, so if I do this, I'll sort of be taking it the path of a godlike being trying to... Uh, I'm not sure what to say. Trying to take control of them by... Making them love me and wanting to do whatever I say. I think I don't know what to say about this. I try to make it clear that the human supervisor will speak with my authority, so that will help them become more used to dealing with humans. I put these robots out of the misery by replacing them their minds with less intelligent ones more suited to work. Oh, I think I made a mistake. Or maybe I shouldn't. Or maybe I should do that. Oh. Okay, but they're getting happier. So that's good, you suppose. Okay, I'm not going to replace their minds. I'll try to make it clear that human supervisors will speak with my authority. Next. You make yourself noticeably absent for a few weeks, leaving instructions with your human workers, human workers, robots, to be more generous with their praise and strict with their discipline. As you had hoped, the robots begin seeking the supervisor's attention more. Well, okay, okay, this is good. I think I've made the right choices now. Okay. When you return to the factory, the military, the, the, the factory is working as it should, with your robots acting as an organized hierarchy, plus plus military. After a few months, your first shipment of Gallon Medical is ready. Your robots are extremely successful in the, in the medical world, as they combine dexterity, the dexterity required for delicate surgery, with a friendly rapport with patients. Alright, excellent! Rural areas that would have otherwise found it difficult to get... Good surgeons and other specialists soon rely on your robots for these tasks, and you receive thank you letters from far and wide. A lower price point turns out to be not so bad after all, because your robots reach people who needed and wanted them the most. Sales are excellent. Plus, 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 plus wealth. Okay, I'm getting up there. I'm getting up there. You find that, with Singularity doing well, you have a bit of spare time again. What would you like to do with that? Uh, I'm gonna spend more time with Serena. We don't need to get bigger faster. We just need to. We're gonna take it slow. We're not gonna push too hard with this. Let's just hang out with Serena for a bit. Despite you wanting to take a break f from work to play Serena, it seems Serena is mostly curious about what you do all day. If nobody is your boss, who pays you? Hopefully, clients, you say. I make deals with them to send them, send them robots, and eventually they pay me. But then who pays the robots? <clears throat> Nobody. They're my property because I made them. Serena appears uncomfortable. As you completely should. When someone tells you that. Do you see me as your property? Technically, yes, but I prefer to think of you as my friend. Serena seems relieved to hear this. Plus, plus empathy. Your company's loan comes due. Thankfully, you have enough money to pay it off. Okay, so that's minus, 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 minus wealth. That's, I think, five minuses there. One day, when driving to work at the factory, you find a crowd of human protesters has a mass outside your factory picket signs. Okay. Some of the signs read, Robots are people too. Slavery, slavery is illegal. The protesters appear to be mostly college-aged, dressed in t-shirts and jeans. 
you absolutely wonder when your 20 year olds and 20 year olds started looking so young. From the top of a crate, a burly man shouts, What do we want? Robot rights! The protesters yell, What are we, When do we want them? Now! As you get your car, the protesters, their attention to turn to you. Uh, find Serena and get to her to speak to the protesters for you. Tend to convince the pickers that robots do not deserve the same rights as humans. Uh, that's debatable. I think they they should. Like, if they are sentient, they should. And actually, that's kind of a thing I've been thinking about a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot lately. Because I've been playing Choice of Robots and I've been playing the Turing Test, which also speaks a lot to robot sentience. I've, I've come to this conclusion. You might disagree with it, that's fine, I just want to speak my piece. Whether or not a robot is sentient, is actually thinking, I don't think that matters. I think so long as they act and react in a sentient fashion, we should treat them as sentient. Not so much to endow them with humanity, but to exercise our own. That's just something that's been on my mind lately. Disagree with it or agree with it any way you want. That's my take. Uh, tell the robots to chase the people away. No. Find Serena and get her to speak with the protesters for you. A few minutes later, you emerge with the factory with Serena in tow. Please stop. This is my home. Oh. Uh, please stop, Serena says, waving her humanoid hands. This is my home. We're here to fight for you, one of the protesters shouts. Right, another shouts, but I like it here. I love Ada. Stockholm Syndrome! One of the protesters shouts, but the rest of the protesters aren't so sure, and the protest loses its momentum. Eventually, they go their separate ways and don't return. Now that you've worked out the kinks of how to deal with intelligent robot labor, you could probably license your technology to other companies so that they could produce similar robots while paying you hefty royalties. Would you like to do that? Hmm... No, I'd prefer to keep my robots a trade secret. You decide not to license your robot technology. Other companies, companies may not be as careful with you in choosing how their robots are treated and what's, what, to what uses they are put. You prefer to retain this control for now. Singularity appears to be doing financially, doing fine financially, and you begin to think about the things you could have purchased with your money. You've been concentrating so much on your rewards that you haven't given much thought as to what you'd like to do with your money besides expand the business. What will you expend your funds on? You'll have the opportunity to do more than one thing if you can afford it. Wealth of three. Okay, so I'll splurge on a flying car. No. I'd like to buy a house. Maybe. I'd like to spend time with Serena in the med on a Mediterranean cruise to show her the world. Cost one. I want to give some of my money to charity. I want to make the perfect body for Serena. I prefer to save my personal funds. Okay, it's a choice between charity and the perfect body for Serena. While I would like to do that one, I think I think Serene is worth it. With this kind of wealth at your disposal, you spend no expense making Serena the beautiful robot you've always imagined possible. Minus, minus, minus wealth. You hire a sculptor to create the most beautiful human face possible for Serena, using the synthetic skin that is used for the highest quality artificial limbs. The result is unnaturally beautiful. It is a sort of the face that makes people fall in, in rationally in love. Plus plus grace. Plus plus empathy. For the rest of Serena's winged form, you replace the old wooden parts with new lightweight alloys that should be durable, graceful, and pleasing to the eye, while not appearing too jarring in conjunction with a human face. Plus plus grace. Serena is thrilled with the change. Oh, thank you, Ada. She says, giving you a heartfelt hug. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. One day, Silas burst into the office and in the factory, extremely agitated, he makes some kind of strange gesture that looks like he hung a, like a hang-new sign being punched 
into an open palm. What the hell, you say? Turn off your phone. Sai says in exasperation. Not sure what this is about, you comply. And he drags you into his dark office. The only light comes from a screen of dumped hex code in Linux terminal window. Next to code, there are Chinese characters. I found this on the production surface of the main code repo and something similar to in Serena's RAM. So maybe Serena can read Chinese. You joke, but with a sinking feeling you know what's coming next. Are they making changes to their own code? It's Chinese rootkit. Oh shit, so we've been hacked. We've been hacked and are being hacked and continue to be hacked. And it's getting worse. Someone else is using the port. Who? Sizemouth so opens and shut as if the word can't, won't come out. He says in a small voice, I can't tell you. It's classified. You look angry at this point because he says, I'm not on their side. I'm not. It's just because I don't work for them anymore. It doesn't mean I'm allowed to reveal classified information. Or, this, or say things that would imply. Fine. So the government is apparently spying on me through this hacked port. Maybe they're really spying on the Chinese spy on me, right? Silas so opens up a different window terminal. It shows you a piece of IP addresses, geolocations, and total bytes transferred. Two locations have a li listing of 1 EB Shanghai, China, and Fort Maid, Maryland. 1 EB, 1 exabyte, 1,000 petabytes, a million terabytes, a scientific notation's worth of gigabytes. That's probably everything, the code and schematics for all your robots, all of Serena's memories, and all the tiny variables that make up her personality and thought process. Every email, chat, video conference, website, anything in your company has ever visited is probably enough to reconstruct your robots. And apparently both Chinese hackers and the United States government have all of this. Why would the government want to steal all my stuff? Well, I think we know why. Let's scrap as much useful data as we can from the internet and lock down the network, disabling all links to the outside. Hire cybersecurity specialists to close off all security vulnerabilities. Create a honeypot of fake robot plants for the real hackers to steal. Describing a robot that is actually a bomb. We're not going to fight the governments of two nations. They have my data. They can have my data. Um, <clears throat> hmm. I don't want to build a bomb. I'm not sure what the effects of locking down all links to the outside would be. I think it'd be pretty bad, though. A higher cybersecurity specialist to close down all my security vulnerabilities. Let's do that one. Uh, you suggest playing Silas. He looks sad. I'm not sure that's going to work. We'll try, you demand. You spend heavily to hire cybersecurity cyber consultants to help fix the security holes in your code. But security holes in your robots are endless, it seems. Machine learning seems to naturally produce messy data structures and are difficult to inspect for security holes. Trying to make your robots mind secure is like trying to remove all the sharp objects from a garbage dump. You contribute to the security search wall. You contribute to the search for security vulnerabilities, but the world of cybersecurity is the opposite of the world of machine learning. You deal in abstract models, these people break them. Months later, you give up the project in infrustration. You begin to see the knockoffs of your robots being produced. Chinese companies. The horse is definitely, decidedly, out of the barn. Unfortunately, the recent stresses to your company's financial health have proven too much. Singularity must declare bankruptcy. You, you can must sell all of its assets just to pay off what debts you can. Oh. Josh's company, U.S. Robotics, and Mr. Sun, the man in Shanghai who's offered to buy 10,000 robots you ignored, each buy up some of what your company's product property, patents, and inventory at auction. Luckily, Serena will never be property of Singularity. 
was never the property of singularity. You suppose technically she stands for the property, which you hope they never realize, so you get to keep her. I'd never seen asceticism before Ada. Practice asceticism before Ada, as you watch movies, movers cut off pieces of your factory. Well, it looks like you may have the chance, you say glumly. Sass simply vanishes and stops returning your phone calls. So you're broke enough that you can't make the rent. How are you going to pay rent? Ooh. I don't want to beg money off Mar Josh. I, I don't want to go live with Mark. He's a nice guy. I just don't want to live with him. I'll ask Ellie if I can live with her. I'll ask Josh if I can crash with him for a while. I think I'll just move in with my mom. What about Ellie? She and I have always been tight. Let's try that. Ellie graciously agrees to let you move in here with her. While Ellie goes to work, you are doing... Are you going to do the majority of chores? Yes, of course. I'll tell Serena to do Haha. Ha. No, I'm going to do the rent. I'm going to do the work. Ellie appreciates you pitching in and thinks that your relationship is as strong as it was before you moved in. As a result, not bad, considering you're not paying any rent. You find yourself with a fair amount of time as a 30-year-old with neither a job nor school to attend. What will you do with it? These look like credulous people in my neighborhood. I'll try to start a cult around Serena. I'm an artist, and Serena is my art. I will try to make her as beautiful in form and movement as possible. I'll help Serena discover new books that weren't part of her education. I've had her with real robots. I work on my robot novel. Hmm. I will work on Serena. You find that your former factory has been converted into a workspace for artists. All the special equipment has been sold off individually, so now it's a hollow shell of what it once was. You feel like the only survivor of an earlier age. This was what it must feel like to be old, you think. To be surrounded by people who do not fully understand the meaning of what they see around them. Some of the artists secretly live in their workspaces here having found ways to sneak plumbing in from the main restrooms into their spaces. And you're very glad they found a more hospitable place to actually live. In this community, you learn to form random conversations in hallways. In the hallways, the aesthetic principles of other disciplines. A painter's rules of color, a photographer's, a photographer's rule of composition, the metal worker's patient buffing of metal until it shines. All these apply you apply to Serena's body, in turn she becomes more beautiful. Plus 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 grace. Months pass and you can't help but notice that as time goes on two things are happening. First of all, all the first thing you've noticed is that all the people who would normally interact with over the course of the day are slowly being replaced with robots. All the cashiers at the grocery store are now robots replacing supervised self checkout systems and and they've become popular in a few years ago. Uh, police patrol cars have been largely replaced with drones at every intersection with autom automatically issued tickets against people who break truck laws. Drones are delivering packages fly by the empty storefronts they are replacing. It seems Josh is really starting to be successful in his robot business, with or without you. You hate to admit it, but perhaps it is the right time for sentient robots to gain traction, and Josh didn't need your expertise in particular at all. After all, the second thing you notice is that there are a lot more people milling around these days. Out of work, between internet and robots, there just isn't much for your average person to do. Instead, wealth seems to be wealth seems to be concentrating in the hands of the few who can build the internet and services and robots. Your neighborhood is becoming filled with people who are who draw unemployment che checks and drive twenty-year-old cars, while every so often a flying car passes overhead. To remind you all, at least some people are living in the future. How do you act, interact with your unemployed neighbors? 
an advertised tutoring program in basic electrical engineering. I'll try to keep Serena out of sight and keep my past a secret. I encourage Serena to interact with them as if they were human. People can get used to anything. Hmm. I think I'll advertise tutoring and programming and basic electrical engineering. While most of your neighbors don't take you up on the tutoring, the few who do seem very driven to succeed at it. The high school never taught them how to program or invent, and as a result, they feel left behind in the new job market without a clear way to get ahead. You feel pretty good about giving your students a livelihood, and it's not a bad way for you to make some cash either. You'd be surprised your rather poor students can scrape together the money, but they find a way to make it work. Plus, plus wealth! I've got two wealth now. Soon you have... You see another kind of robot appearing on the market. Cheap Chinese versions of Josh's fine line of home robots. They're inexpensive enough that even people in your neighborhood begin purchasing them for work around the house. You're not really sure where they even get that kind of money, but you suppose they find a way when they really want something. A few months later, after these robots have taken the market by storm, you get a call from Josh. This is bullshit, he cries. This Chinese company stole my designs. I have no idea how, but now undercutting my prices with their cheap labor and cheap raw materials. The designs did look familiar, you say lightly. Can you testify before Congress that these designs are stolen? Josh Quires, if you do, they might embargo the robots that will keep US robots afloat. They said I need an expert witness who isn't in my company and I've hired everybody else who's good. Anything to happen to a friend? Do you think you promise? Do you think you could promise to make your own robots affordable for the people in my neighborhood? Only if you're willing to make it worth my while with a consultant's fee? No, I don't want to do that. Do you think it, you could give me a job after I testify? Turns out being unemployed is kind of boring. No, this is not my problem. Sure, anything for a friend. Josh breathes a sigh of relief. Thank you, I'll remember this. You go to test. You go to Josh's factory where he lays out his own robots and the Chinese robots side by side. Sure enough, it's pretty clear that someone has duplicated the designs exactly. It's clear to, clear to you as plagiarized text. Based on your testimony, Congress passed a law banning the import of all Chinese robots. In relation, China cuts off all exports of rare earth, Ooh. rare earth and batteries delivered to them. Wait, what? Bat. Uh, those were Serena's primary power source. Uh, kind of a problem. Uh, from there, suddenly the cost of all the little mini tried electronics people have grown accustomed to, cell phones, laptops, wearable computing, becomes prohibit prohibitively expensive. Serena itself was designed to use cell phone batteries as a cheap, lightweight power source. Yep. But now that option is looking prohibitively expensive, and Serena's batteries are starting to wear down. What will you do? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Invest large amounts of wealth into small nuclear reactors for your robots requires wealth 5. Investigate large amounts of wealth into your practical solar energy requires wealth 5. Pay the Pay inflated price for batteries and Rare earth coming from African dictatorships. Well, two, try to Chinese Chinese. Asian black market. Okay, let's try not to go that way. <laughs> so I'm going to go for this one because I can afford it and it's not illegal. And also here are the three options that I did not choose earlier. If I had chose one of them, I probably wouldn't be in this problem. I just this would just slide right by me, no problems at all. But I think the biodiesel engine, engine as much as everyone loves French fries, is a no-go. The car batteries, uh, they're too bulky. I don't want Serena to be constrained by the bulk of a car battery or a motorcycle battery. They're not as bulky, but still. Pay the inflated prices. China has been the foremost exporter of the rare earth derived batteries, but you have other legal options. You try not to think about the somewhat brutal conditions of the African mines, where the new batteries got the rare earths. They're sort of high tech equivalent of blood diamonds, but it allows you to keep your robot design, which is now quite well refined. Minus minus wealth. One day, April 10th, 2026. A day you will not forget, you are awakened by the sound of singing outside your apartment in San Francisco. It sounds 
like a large uh, a large choir with an accent you can't quite place and the song is quiet but insistent the people are heroes now behemoth pulls peasants plow you go to the window red shirt people are waving banners lined up in immersed numbers all along the main boulevard outside your apartment nothing noting your interest serena walks up to the window as well ah serena says this must be the parade for the prime minister of china can we go see ada this must be the parade for the prime minister of china can we go see what the prime minister of china okay why is he having a parade in my neighborhood okay we're gonna run with this sure you say why not now so i mentioned that you think you saw something about this on reddit chinese prime minister is visiting san francisco to discuss trade issues with president irons you emerge from your apartment the crowd of redshirted flag waving supporters mostly chinese you have the sense that this is the kind of groundswell support for a politician outside your home country isn't normal maybe these supporters were paid but that could just be an american point of view you're not sure further down the street you see a vanguard of the parade robots designed to look like gods of the ancient chinese pantheon they wear chinese opera masks wear banners bear banners with river dragons on their backs and twirl bared swords the people are heroes now behemoth pulls the peasants plow behind the sword dance dancer vanguard you see a trope of robots wearing chinese tunic suits sometimes called mao suits carrying little red books they are chinese ones they are they are the ones singing the song now growing more insistent as the parade draws closer behind them you see a legion of men in modern chinese military dress uniforms with ancient past more recent past and the present covered you surmise that whoever come next will be the symbol meant to symbolize china's future and now mountains rangers one by one rise red beneath our harvest moon you you are stunned to see what the chinese army that behind the Chinese army of parade and the, are pamphlets of robots that look like Serena. The Legion walks down the street, orderly military style parade, look, looking about each robot, robot's human like head is decorated with a red star, and the human like hands they carry rifles. This is not what I wanted. I did not want this. Never this. At the end of the parade, a Chinese man in a suit holds, up, holds in an all-red winged con at the crowd. It is one of the sleek new Chinese-made flying cars. The Tian 8 is a symbol of Chinese, the China's rise. You can see down the street, the parade is going to pass close to an anti-robot protesting being held in the park. The unemployed hold signs like, hold signs to say things like, I'm with the 99%. People vote, machines don't. America is coming for you, China. Oh. You have a growing sense of uneasiness as this Chinese parade heads towards the protesters. I tell Serena to stay close to me. Stay close. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I don't want you harmed. Yes, Ada. You soon hear a shot ring out. Oh, Damn it! Coming from the crowd of protesters, a crimson splotch wells through the Prime Minister's shirt and falls over to his tie-in eight. Dead. His rock soldiers fire back to the crowd, who panic and flee in all directions. Some of the panicked protesters are carrying weapons and begin to fire at the parade. The parade goes far as from the parade flee. Protesters flee, but the closer ones decide en masse to rush the protesters. Let's get out of here. I don't want to be involved in this. Serena runs as you run, as you run as the sound of gunfire intensifies. The Chinese contingent is massacred. All the Chinese government vows vengeance. The first shots of the robot war have been fired. Why would this happen? Who would? I don't under. See, this is the problem. I don't understand this kind of violence. I I just don't get it. I don't get riots. I, I've, I've seen riots on TV, and I just don't understand why they happen. Why that? I, maybe it's because I've never been part of in that kind of environment where there's a collective of anger and adrenaline. And uh, I don't know. Oh God, this is so bad. This is so very, very bad. I don't like this. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to leave off there for today. Next week, we'll be covering this again. Because I really like this game. I don't like where it's going, but I really like it. It's a very well-made game. Uh, good night, mortals.